What's up guys, this is Kyle from Wax Museum, back with another mail video, and I've been sitting on at least one of these for a little while now, so uh, ready to get this stuff opened up, ready to talk about it and uh, scan it and all that fun stuff that comes with a mail day. So this first one here you can see is part of the uh, standard envelope program. This is one that um, I kind of already have a version of this card. But this one showed up, and I wanted it for a couple of reasons, although, whew, I don't... <laughs> okay, so they didn't even put the card in the top loader. That's kind of strange. And there's a big crease. Because of that, there's a big crease. Um, oof, that's not good at all. So really, uh, yeah, actually disappointed about this one because it creased every all four parts of that window because they they put a top loader in there but did not put the card in the top loader I guess they didn't have one that was thick enough even though this definitely should fit in there so I was excited about this because um, this is an Elgin Baylor autograph from when he was an executive and part of the uh, his first name actually fits on there a little better even though the the last part of his name doesn't fit on there let me grab my other one here for a second if I have it handy so it was an upgrade over, or it was supposed to be an upgrade over this copy here, um, which is numbered to 200. This one is numbered to 25. Um, not happy about the way that was shipped, though. I just don't understand why people can't figure this out. Um, anyway, whatever. I'm not going to keep... <laughs> not obviously not happy about that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that one be. This one was supposed to be standard envelope, and I figured it would show up damaged. And lo and behold, it feels like it's got a big ball of bubble wrap in here. So thank you to that seller ahead of time. All right, so this is a Jermaine O'Neal patch that is not numbered. It's from 2002. I still believe it to be pretty rare because I have not seen one of these in a long time. The odds of these were pretty tough. I wish I had more information about them. Uh, but it was a patch set. It's even labeled as a patch set. A lot of the stuff from this era, I mean, I'm guessing it's probably either 25 or 50. No more than that. Uh, would have obviously liked a multicolor patch, but you know what? When a rare card like this comes up and, and you haven't seen one, you, you kind of take what you get and you upgrade it later. Okay. I'm still bummed about that Elgin Baylor. I shouldn't even let that affect the other cards in the mail day and this one feels like there's hardly any protection in here and this one should have a lot more protection than either one of those uh, because it costs considerably more than those this is one that uh, it showed up with a, a very reasonable buy it now I sent an offer I waited about 15 minutes there's always that that anguish that comes in that time frame because I knew I should have bend it and I've lost out on stuff like that before. So I eventually just ended up hitting that bin because I didn't get a counter uh, in that, you know 15 minutes or whatever. And um, the reason I wanted it is because it is a Rick Barry on-card auto with a really nice patch. And a lot of the Rick Barry stuff out there, if it is a patch auto that's on-card, it's, it's really expensive. Like it's like a, you know, like a flawless or something. So I do not regret that at all. Rick Barry is one of my favorite, probably my top five um, personalities to read about in NBA history. Just a really interesting guy. Um, just a really strange personality. Even his own book is is a little bit strange. I recommend reading that if, if you have a chance. But anyway, there's that Rick Barry. Very happy about that one. Happy about this Jermaine O'Neal. Uh, the seller will be getting... A message about this because there's really no excuse for that even if it is standard envelope if you're going to put a top loader in there put the card in the top loader all right so there you have it my salty mail day talking about anguish and and uh creased up cards and i you know at the end of the day they are cards but uh you always want to get what you pay for in good condition so let me know uh what you would do in this situation remember there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every thursday and as always 
Thanks for watching.